not, Herbert. You're super chill about my very clingy centipede person, X. You're pretty great, huh? The mayor awards you three smarts uh, as a reward for your outstanding yes. work on Operation Black Market Creep Raid. Also, <laughs> you made Joy super happy. Yay. Okay, it's going well with Joy. I feel like I'm, I'm, I am I should just... I think you saved it, yeah. Yeah. Everybody okay. choose a movie. Say your choice out loud. Um, 300. Uh, Cats 2019. Oh. And the likelihood that Herbert would survive in... Oh my god, that's you again. <laughs> he wouldn't survive in 300. No. How I do mean, you choose so badly? I guess it's 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 not like hard to survive in like the cats movie. It's just hard to survive watching it. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, I'll I'll be taking that one. Yep. <laughs> okay. Herbert time. It's Herbert time, baby. Herbert is doing way better than um, Nerbert or Sherbert. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> He's the okay. pr pride of the family. Yeah. Um. I guess. I don't. Um. Fuck it. I'll go here. You spend the day learning new skills with the monster scouts in order to earn badges. You earn a badge for healing a wound only using a bark of a tree. You earn a badge for writing poems in iambic pentameter. You earn a badge for building a blackberry using only real blackberries. <laughs> nice, completing all of those unexpected. Oh, there's the creativity. Oh, that's and creativity. probably useless lessons earned you two creativity. Dope. That's oh, my girl. You're enjoying a romantic afternoon picnic with Joy. You made sure that everything here was weakened, including the picnic basket and the blanket. <laughs> that's nice of me. That sounds good. Gotta say, Herbert, this is pretty impressive. I didn't know you could weave a blanket out of tofu fibers, but... What the fuck? Did it just start raining? Suddenly, inexplicable rain, impossible. All Rooker promised it would be sunny today. But despite AI's prediction, a menacing storm rolls in. Oh my god. Hello. <laughs> and a bolt of lightning strikes two feet in front of you. It's pretty scary, but the sexy villainous medical warlock Locus that steps out of the lightning is even scarier. No, she is. Oh my god. Okay, why does Joy have so many? <laughs> <laughs> Joy has so many hot exes. Yeah. <laughs> What's up with that? Why are they all here? <laughs> I think this is straight up your alley. Uh, okay. Um. Uh, I'll try to make not every voice the same in this game, but it's not been going too well so far. <laughs> yeah, well, the, we, we have a lot of voice-based games, so we are it's running out of voices. Fine. Joy, my old flame, my most powerful nemesis. Just seeing you fills me with lust and with blinding rage. Oh, goodness. Herbert, this is... This is Salome, my ex-girlfriend. Salome, what are you doing here? We broke up ages ago, and I already defeated you in the season 5 finale. <sighs> That's all loop under the bridge. I was stalking your bikini pics on Insta yesterday, and I saw a post on Ararax's feed. You were hanging out with that bug-faced buffoon. I'm filled with horny jealousy. Joy, if you wanted to have crazy hot looped up rebound sex with an ex-lover, why didn't you call me? We were electric together, honey. Holy shit, it's none of your business, but I was not having rebound sex with Axorax. As usual, you're completely blinded by your own thirstiness. Oh, well, if you're not in the mood for rebound sex, we can have all kinds of sex you want. Make up sex, hate sex, break from doing your taxes sex, anything you want as long as it's sex. Listen, Salome, I'll admit that we had a pretty insane sexual chemistry, but I called it off for a reason. It was always getting into in way too messy too fast. And also you're evil! Remember when you dressed up in that leather harness to distract me and your poisonous mist spell killed like 
180 people? Yeah, I've got to pass on this. What a disappointment. I didn't want to do this, but I have no choice. I'm forced to use my secret weapon of seduction. Prepare yourself for... This foot massage coupon! You gave me some romantic coupons on our anniversary, and I've saved them all this time. Now, I'm redeeming this coupon. To completion. Oh, I'm gonna complete. <laughs> I can not believe that I have to explain this to you, but romantic coupons are not legally valid. Especially after a breakup. Duh! Super duper duh! <laughs> Ridiculous! There's no expiration date on this coupon. But I suppose I can be reasonable. I have a whole collection of coupons here. How about a trade-in? We could re redeem this gastric cleansing coupon from my doctor. Or this Groupon for a free Brazil Brazilian wax. Oh. Or this coupon for one free sexual yogurt experience from Yogurt oh. Man. <laughs> what sexual yogurt? <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, these coupons are definitely bullshit, but picking one is probably the fastest way to get Salome to leave us alone. Herbert, which coupon should I pick? Help Joy vanquish her evil ex-girlfriend by choosing the least horny coupon. Okay, which one is least horny? Fortune favors, fortune favors the bold. Choose the ask me any question and I'll answer truthfully coupon. That could go wrong. Yeah. Pick the right leg coupon. It's the last coupon we need to form the legendary Exodia coupon. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, okay. I think uh, you're right. No. The first one does sound like it could go really wrong. Yeah, I feel... Oh, I feel like... Yes. I'll, I'll, try the, I'll, try, I'll try this one. Okay. Oh god. Oh, beans. Oh, beans. Oh, it's gonna go so wrong! Oh, thank you! Oh. <laughs> the right leg coupon. Pathetic. You fool! That coupon is the most useless one in my whole collection. It's completely worthless. Unless, of course, you happen to have the other four Exodia coupons, but that's impossible. Victory will be mine! Herbert, what are you doing? We have to pick a coupon that somehow defeats Salome's uh, horniness. Or I might lose myself in her raw sexual charisma. <laughs> You've been waiting for this moment your whole life and you won't back down now. You grab the right <laughs> leg coupon from Salome and pull out the coupons your grandpa left you. Oh god. Got some Yu-Gi-Oh energy in here. You channel the heart of the cards and draw the four legendary Exodia coupons. You finally have them. All five pieces of Exodia. Wait, no! Herbert, it's too dangerous! You have no idea what you're doing! I can't believe it, Herbert. It's it's the ultimate coupon strategy. Only the true the one true true chosen coupon redeemer can summon a coupon this powerful. Suddenly the ground shakes in a devastating tremor and Exodi, a pharaoh king of power, emerges. He's a giant golden god and he's ripped as fuck. Salome, Exodia shouts, his voice sent a primal mortal fear down your spine. It is I, Exodia, your ex-lover. Oh no! Oh boy. This goes even deeper. Oh my goodness. Salome? Did you fuck Exodia? Of course I did. Why do you think they call him Exodia? <laughs> He's my ex, and I love puns. I accidentally cheated on him 18 times. And he got super pissed off for some reason. So I banished him away. I sealed his soul into five coupons never to be released. But Herbert has released me from my dark prison and now I have a bunch of coupons from where when we dated and I want to redeem them. <laughs> <laughs> so if you right, Salome. You could use a taste of your own lube flavored medicine. But can you two handle this somewhere else? We were in the middle of a vegan picnic. Of course, Exodia respects personal space and boundaries, shrieks Exodia. Wow, he's a pretty cool guy. <laughs> he's a pretty cool guy. He's a pretty chill dude. Thanks for your help, Herbert. I don't I don't think Salome is going to bother us anytime soon. Should we get back to our romantic picnic now? 
Yes, you made Joy super happy and you also gained three smarts from an unrelated shenanigans that happens after your picnic. Nice. Nice. Cool. Okay, that was a really good round for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is going well. I think I'm gonna do some more forest bathing here. Today you decide to hike all the way across the woods. You want to see what's on the other side. It's a long treacherous hike that ends up only taking an hour. I guess these woods aren't that big after all. How do you and your friend get lost in them so often? Anyway, it turns out there's a library on the other side on the, of the woods. You go in and read some books or something and gain two smarts. You meet up it's with boy. Damien to help him with what he claims is a charitable endeavor. I believe that all living creatures, great and small, deserves a fighting chance at life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's why I've been making these tiny magnifying glasses to give to ants. Now they can fight fire with fire if anyone ever tries to use a magnifying glass to fuck with them. I brought them these gifts of the gift of flame like a Prometheus. <laughs> what the fuck is even that? And you know what happened to Prometheus, don't you? Yeah, he was worshipped as a hero and the inventor of the greatest of all art forms, arson. <laughs> and no, he was chained to a rock. In a sexy way? No, in a horrifying torture where his liver was eating every day, eaten every day way. But I assure you, your punishment, punishment will be much worse. Well, why, camp director Miss Weaving? I feel like I'm actually being reasonably good compared to my classic bad boy antics. I don't know what sort of behavior is tolerated at Spooky High, but this is Camp Spooky and I'm going to hold you to my standards. You think it's an accomplishment to tone down with arson while encouraging it in ants. No, 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 Mr. Lavi. You, you may be in high school, but at the end of uh, the day, you are literally a legal adult, and it's time for you to face consequences for your actions. But that isn't what my face is made for. It doesn't want to face responsibilities. It wants to face shenanigans and knife crimes and being badass. <laughs> well, until your face learns to behave, I'm afraid I'm going to have to confiscate it from you. Ha! You can't do that. In fact, I'd like to see you try. Oh no! Oh god, he lost his face. His face! His face! Have a nice day, Mr. Lavi. I hope you learn a valuable lesson about what faces are for. Ah, what the fuck? What the fuck? How did she do that? How am I talking? I don't have a mouth. Ah! <laughs> so Damon is understandably freaking out, but with no way to get his face back, the best way to come to this rescue, to his rescue, is to con convince him that this is a good thing. You know what the best poker face is? No face. Become a poker pro and make a fortune. No more face. No more dentist. Oh, he's a poker pro. Absolutely. Ha! So I guess that's true. I, it's not often that not having something is the best may, way to have it. Expect for, except for like STDs, I guess. I'm pretty sure our camp director Miss Weaving put underground poker rings uh, on her list of forbidden activities. But what is she going to do? Take away my face? Already happened, baby. <laughs> with the gusto of someone not. With nothing left to lose, at least in terms of facial features, Damien sets up a an illegal high-stakes poker tournament on the campground. Before long, an intense crowd of poker sharks, many of whom are, are also actual sharks, have assembled to try to take Damien's hard-earned stolen riches off of him. But your instincts Instincts was correct. Damien's inability to express his emotion, even when he wanted to, puts him head and shoulders, but not nose, mouth and eyes ahead <laughs> of the other players. Oh man, look at all these idiots with their idiot eyes and their paranoid noses and their muscular teeth. Uh, every <laughs> twitch is a giveaway. See what hammerheads over there? His left eye wings uncontrollably when he has a bad card. That's Bullshark's nostrils flare. Wow, these are some tongue twisters. Yeah, damn. Uh, when he has pears, that's horny, that horny toad goblin is visibly aroused whenever he catches a card on the river. That miniature cocks an eyebrow, eyebrow when he has a straight and the uh, cockatrice keeps screaming, Yes, I have a royal flush every time <laughs> he has a royal flush. <laughs> 
Well, that's bad. He has no idea how much he's betraying with... Betraying with that tell. Those poor, poor face-having fools. Mr. Lavi, uh, what is the meaning of this? Why are you sitting on a throne made entirely of money? Oh, that's just because I cast in all my chips already. And I wanted to sit on a physical manifestation of my superiority as a poker player to intimidate all of these little bitches. Are you running an illegal high-stakes poker ring on my campground, young man? I am, and it's all thanks to you. No face, no tells, baby. I'm talking... I'm taking this all the way to Vegas. In that case, I think it's about time I restored your face to you. Your punishment is over, and I hope you learned a valuable lesson here today. Ha! Ah, I don't think it's my face, Miss Reaving. <laughs> ah, perhaps I confiscated too many faces today, and all of them look the same to me, like the face of a moral bankruptcy. Here you go, young rascal. Hell yeah, I learned the most important lesson of all. There, there was no lesson. None of my actions have consequences. We made a fuck ton of money. I'm gonna live forever. <laughs> Moral bankruptcy doesn't feel at all like uh, bankruptcy as you gain tons of money. Whoa, ever no longer a stat. Ah, oh, come on. Oh, Too damn. fun and one boldness. Okay. Uh, everybody choose something bad. Say your choice out loud to the other player before clicking. Uh, stopping your toe. Oh, that's a good one. Um, um, all the illness in the world. Oh no. Improv, a 30 second pitch for a product that could eliminate said bad thing forever. Player order is decided by best to worst product. I don't understand what this means. Are you tired of having all the illness in the world? Try uh, dying. <laughs> the, <laughs> the new product from um, from Street Smarts. Yes, dying. You can die in all sorts of ways. We have a variety of different um, different ways. But uh, at the end of the day, um, if you don't want illness, try the inevitability of death. Rated R. <laughs> <laughs> Um, stubbing your toe, that's... I don't even know. This one is yours, too. Thanks. That was good. <laughs> oh, I think you have to pick this time. Oh, yeah, I do. Okay, we're oh, getting oh, close yes, yes, to yes, the yes, end. Yes, 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 Okay. This time I'm actually going for my girl. Okay. it's going well. It is going well, I'll agree. Boom. You sit down between a classic Dahlia X Joy exchange. Dahlia is being very intense and excited, and Joy looks like she walked over a bit of hot coals if it would shut her up. Come on, Joy! It'd be a great addition to the coven! I've already memorized all your moves, your favorite uh, catchphrases. I even brought the limited edition Kawaii Third Hope phone case of eBay. What more do I need to do? Uh, how about be a witch? Or having even the slightest bit of foresight and subtlety in your plans. I can be subtle! Look at me! I'm being subtle right now! Watch as I inconspicuously nudge you towards inviting me into the cavern! No, please let me into the cavern! I want this so badly! We don't need a fourth member. Three is the number of the triple goddesses, which is not a force that can be broken. Also, we only have three main character slots available. If we open a fourth, the network will be forced to establish a union. Well, I'm sure there's something I could do. Maybe I could be your body double for the really intense fight scenes. I mean, we're basically twins already. <laughs> no. Oh, come on! Look, I already have a joy wig that I can wear. Is that real hair? Hell yeah! I've been collecting it slowly while you've slept so that I could be prepared for this exact situation. Wait, it should show you just how committed I am to the carbon. Joy looks halfway between exasperated and disturbed, but god, Dahlia's just so cute when she irresponsibly passionate about something. You know she's not gonna drop this until she gets a satisfactory answer, but which of them do you want your answer to appeal to the most? Um, you can be a coven sleeper agent, so go to sleep and we will let you know when you're needed. Coven's last season was too grim. The season we need, uh, 
this season we need more sex appeal. You can be the irresistible blue seductress who distracts the <laughs> villains. Well, I'm probably going for the sleeper agent uh, yep. if I'm gonna... Uh, Woo Joy. Yep. Yes. Wait, how does me sleeping help the coven with an intense battle sequence or a tender emotional conversation that builds character relationships and raises the stakes for the overall season arc? No, no, trust me. Herbert is like... So right about this. The role of Coven Sleeper Agent is very serious and definitely totally essential to our cause. Oh! Well, in that case, count me in! I'll sleep like no man, woman, or non binary badass has ever slept before! Yeah, cool, you do that. Okay! Now, let's talk, talk strategy! Should I go silent mode or full on snoring? Do you have any advice on the best pose to maximize results? Blankets or no blankets? Or should I sleep with one foot outside of the blankets in case I get too hot? Um, you do whatever you think is best. I trust you. As long as you can stat like right away. Of course! Anything from my fearless leader. I'll go back to my tent and start now! <laughs> Thanks, Herbert. You're a lifesaver. You know, the coven itself may not necessarily need a new member, but I could always use someone to help me blast up rabbit fangirls. But you know, only if that interests you. Oh, hell yeah it does. You enjoy some amazing alone time with Joy discussing your favorite coven episode and the best strategies on how to keep annoying fans at bay. So romantic. Hell yeah. Okay, Mr. Thompson here. Um, kind of want to figure out what this place is. You sit on a log by yourself, weird choices in my honest opinion, because you seem like the kind of person who already spent lots of nights alone by himself. <laughs> that was harsh. I could be wrong, but I mean, you're the one playing a dating sim in your free time, so... Any <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I will, uh, will anyone join you or will art imitate life and leave you alone for the night <laughs> once again? We'll see. A dish. No one sits with you. You write a sad letter home to your parents while you're sadly alone on your sad little log. It reads, Dear Mom and Dad, it's Thompson again. Camp is fine, except I'm sitting alone because no one likes me. Missing you, XOXO. You send your letter home via carrier pigeon, which uh, we always had here at Camp Spooky, so shut up. You get your reply back within a matter of minutes. Dear Thompson, it's Mom. Didn't read your letter yet. Out clubbing, having time of my life. <laughs> Don't wait up for me. Remember to wash the rash off your armpit before it gets infected again. Kisses. Curses, you're even lamer than you thought than your own mother. And you totally forgot about that rash. You lose two boldness and two fun. Oh, no. Okay, we'll take a gamble here again. Weekend arrives, and so it's time to visit one, the small magical Latino cat. Look who's here! Welcome to my bar! Really? I know who is in the right mind would take such a risk! I guess you have some more uh, thirst than common sense! Anyway, check this drink out! Old Ooh. Clum Chumps Champagne Ooh. No, you ever got the recipe right! Wanna try it? Otherwise you always have the misery box! Oh okay. yeah, I'm absolutely gonna. No, uh, that's you. Sorry. That's me. I think I'm. I'm. I think I'm going for the mystery box this time. Okay. Boop. Oh no. Oh, it's a protein shake. Protein, protein shake. Mystery box, so bold of you. Hope you're happy with it. No refunds. What do I get? Oh, the full moon. What do you say? Oh. Uh, I think he says the same thing every time. Yeah. It's fine. I am absolutely taking that drink. That sounds hell sick. Yeah, it looks cool. Gallons only. And the price is the drink you chose. Oh, that looks fucking gross. Yep. Uh, <laughs> well, it is a lot of protein. A nutritious protein shake. It's just a bunch of magic boxes I was collecting and keeping in that cup. It was supposed to be for someone to drink them. But here we are! They will probably swarm beside you and shell is all of your and change all of your stats randomly. Oh no. That's why it's called a shake, because you shake up your stats. Not because it's an actual shake, you genius. <laughs> I thought it was pretty obvious. 
Whoa. Okay. Okay. I hope I don't need smarts. <laughs> I have no charm. Nah, it's fine. The full moon is very powerful, but which not just you, but also but all of you need to take sips from it carefully. It will open your souls to the beautiful full moon you have tonight, and its power will shower all your stats, even if it's just a little bit. Oh, okay. that's so good! That was a good drink. This is the part where I leave before you puke all over me at you! Okay. Do something good. Um, the power of friendship. Eating ice cream on a hot summer's day. Oh. Found a treasure map. There was a marked spot and apparently there was a treasure chest buried there with plenty of the good thing. Player order is decided based on how likely you'd go on an adventure to get that treasure for you. Well, the problem with the power of friendship is that it is not the uh, the end goal, it is the friends we make along the way. Exactly, exactly. So I, I feel like if there is a marked spot where it says like friendship, then you know you're gonna get there and it's gonna be nothing and it's gonna be like a whole lesson. Where if yep. it's ice cream, you're just gonna go there, you're gonna get ice cream, that's sick. I agree. I think this one is you again. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, we have two two days left until two the days left. shower. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um. Oh, it's me. Maybe I should uh, try to to get my smarts up. Yep. And w that was here, right? At the woods. Uh, I did the, yeah, because the HQ that was creativity, right? Hmm. So I'll I'll go to the woods. Okay. That day in the woods, you find a mysterious portal to an unknown dimension. Woo! You're not so stupid that you jump in your, into it yourself this time. So you decide to tie a chipmunk to a string <laughs> and throw it in there. Oh, that's horrible. You pull the chipmunk back, expecting it to be dead or at least warped by the interdimensional travel. But it turns out whatever is on the other side of that portal taught the chipmunk calculus and some very cogent arguments about gender identity. <laughs> oh boy. You and the chipmunk have a long, insightful conversation and he helps you with your summer school homework. You gain two smarts. Oh, good for, good for me. Yeah. Later, you're looking around for Joy. You just finished reading her copy of How to Be a Slightly Better Friend Despite Your Suffocating Horniness by <laughs> Dr. Hugh D. Hugh Boner, MD. <laughs> That's funny. You see Joy nearby, she's quietly reading and you learn that it's rude to interrupt, so you give the book back and turn to go. Yay, you showed basic respect to your friend. Hell yeah, way to go, Herbert. Wait, Herbert, that's it? Uh, you're just going to leave without introducing any absurd high-stakes high shenanigans? Come on, don't be shy. You're always... in... in... inciting. The anger of dark evil forces, and I always save you, thanks to my magical powers and impeccable leadership skills. You tell Joy that you don't really have an urgent misadventures going on. Ever since you stabbed that ghost in the face last week, things around camp has been pretty chill. Oh, well, I guess that's good. I mean, it's not like I was hoping you were possessed by an eldritch horror so I could plunge you and save the world from a primal evil. In fact, I'm happy that you're not interrupting me with life or death narrative stakes. I was technically supposed to take this summer off, so I guess I'll ugh, relax. Joy is so cute and also a low-key workaholic. You remind her that she defeated Dimitri and Morty's plan to poison the water supply last week. That was enough heroics, right? Herbert, you're totally right! Dimitri and Morty are my closest official nemesis. We should head over to Camp Rival Camp right away. We can spy on Dimitri and Morty! Make sure they're not plotting the end of the world or the rise of the dark side or anything like that. Great idea, Herbert! Not what you meant, but what ifs? Uh, you followed Joy to Camp Rival Camp and you two hide out in the bushes right away. You spot Dimitri and Morty. Oh my god, that's so cute. Yeah. <laughs> 
Check out those fiendish, muscular villains! They're clearly planning some kind of evil scheme! Just look at them! They're using that sword to make adorable origami animals? Yep, Marty and Dimitri are doing some adorable and maybe deadly arts and crafts. Before long, they move on to their next BFF activity. <laughs> Grooming an alpaca. Dimitri put a party hat and a poncho on the alpaca and Marty is busy weaving beads into its mane. They are having so much fun. Okay, I know it doesn't look like they're being evil, but what if... That's a sacrifi sacrificial alpaca. Maybe they're preparing to sacrifice it in some kind of evil ritual. Then you watch as these two shirtless goofballs cook up some homemade raspberry jelly. Somehow they fashion some fancy jelly beards and then wear the beards. Sticky but sexy. This is so frustrating. I can't tell if these two are doing evil deeds or if they're being stupid. And I'll look like a total idiot if I intervene when there's no evil to defeat. I can't believe I'm saying this, but... Herbert, what do you think? How do we tell if Morty and Demetria are actually being evil? Okay. Demetria and, Demetri and Morty are idiots and, stupidly, and stupidity is basically a different language. Hi, an interpreter who's fluent in stupidity. <laughs> uh, Disney movies taught you well. If those two are evil, they'll burst into a classical villain song sooner or later. Ooh. Okay. Hmm. That's a tough one. That is a tough one. Oh no. Oh beans. I don't want to fuck up. Oh no. Uh... <sighs> I'll take this one. Yes! Ooh. An evil villain song. I don't know, Herbert. That sounds kind of off genre, but I guess Dimitri and Morty skew more musical than I do. Wait, holy shit! I think I hear highly singable music. Where's that music even coming from? Let's go check it out. You and Joy stealthily sneak closer. Sure enough, you catch Dimitri and Morty breaking into out into a classic Disney villain song. Oh my god! Oh my god! god. <laughs> Gosh, it disturbs me to see you, my friend, covered with raspberry jam, but I know that these afternoon arts and crafts are a critical part of our plan. Yes, my dear friend, it may seem we're unwise, spending all day in such mirth, but I promise these beards, this llama, these cranes will help us conquer the earth. True, we rule the world with our cruelty and show off our fuckable <laughs> beer boats. Uh, a bot will shatter our foes with our washboard abs and then make them massage our quads. No one's wicked like us, no one's thicket like us, no one's slimy and cruel and big ticket like us. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, these guys are definitely evil. You gotta stop them, but first you wait until they finish their song. Interrupting a musical number is just rude. It is. As soon as they complete their final crescendo, you and Joy jump out of the bushes. It's time for some motherfucking heroism. Gotcha, boys. I know you two are planning a very evil and very convoluted scheme, so Herbert and I are just going to vanquish you now and save you the trouble. <laughs> Puss, you're right. We're not evil. We're just sexy. You are only th you only think we're evil because we're some th so physically attractive. Happens to me all the time because of my visible cum goddess. <laughs> God. Oh, oh my God. To be fair, your cum goddess are impressive. But I'm completely sure that you two are in the middle of an evil plot. I heard your little song just now, so don't try to deny it. Curses! We've been foiled again by the classic villain trope of singing a song that communicates our evil intentions. <laughs> Damn you, perfect pitch and love of rhyming! You and Joy beat the shit out of Dimitri and Morty. It's violent and not funny at all. Are they dead? Who cares? Yay, you won. Woo! <laughs> That was fun. Now that I've, I've gotten some more work done, I can finally relax. Why don't you spend the day together, Herbert? It's the two of us. Aww. 
You hang out with Joy all day and you two end up singing a romantic ballad in the paddle boat on the lake under the starlight. They dope. The dope duet gets you two creativity and one smart. Hell yeah. Oh, they that do. was a good round for you. Um, let's see here. Let's go to the dome for once. Ooh. That day, a fun and sane scavenger hunt awaits you at the camp dome. Last night, the counselor stole your organs while you were asleep, and you have to solve the scavenger hunt. Clues to get them back. Isn't that fun? No, too bad. You make the best of the situation by stealing your hotter friend's organs in place of your own. You get 10 evil from Dimitri's liver. You also find a very strange gland, and against common sense, you shove it up your nose. It secretes two charm. You're resorting your collection of Pokemon cards, thinking... Oh, that's funny, because we are monsters. Oh, yeah. Thinking... Ah, uh, that's pretty good. Really good. Wistfully, after Terry the Taxman, you once traded for an Arctic colo... colo colonialist Ernest Shackleton when you are interrupted. There you are, Thompson. I've been looking everywhere for you. Those words warm your heart more than five fire ever could. Even more the wildfire for which Damien is presumably searching desperately once more. I'm searching desperately for the wildfire once more. And there it is. Since you were such a big help last time, I thought you might want to try again. I mean, you weren't such a big help as to actually bring the wildfire. But I did appreciate your support and enthusiasm and most... Uh, mostly, if I do find the wildfire, I'm going to need a witness to prove it. I realized our approach last time was all wrong. Yes, we pulled off something radical and metal, as uh, only I could, and with you watching, I guess. But it's fire most known for being radical and metal? Yes, of course it is, but it's also known for being a dangerous and reckless, obeying no laws and fearing nothing. The wildfire will not appear simply to those who are radical and metal, or it totally would already come to me. I need to do something truly, unmistakably dangerous and reckless to lure that sneaky wildfire out. Uh, any thoughts? You are so tempted to tell Damien that the appearance of wildfire is based on weather and, and f weather and foliage not worthiness, and Avari uh, was just fucking with him. But doing that would be against your own in interest, since you would cut short this valuable bonding time. So you make up some reckless, dangerous, stupid bullshit because apparently putting your cross in danger is worth it if for you as long as you can do shenanigans with him. You should really do some introspection <laughs> about this letter, this avis, your priorities and ethics. But for now, you pitch Damien the best idea you got. Um, enroll in an expensive university and declare a useless major that has no job security. So reckless. Someone <laughs> truly reckless would travel at 150 miles uh, per hour in a Ferrari being driven by cats. Cats don't give a fuck. Oh, the, the university one. Yes. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that. There are plenty of universities all across Monstropolis that offer free higher education since they value knowledge and fostering the youth. But let's go to one of those backward ass areas that charge exorbitant amounts for a piece of paper that will never allow you to make enough money to pay back the amount you paid for that piece of paper. <laughs> oh man, saying this out loud, I can't believe we're doing this. This is so fucking crazy. Whoa, I can't think of anything more reckless than this. Like, what if I paid $60,000 a year to study the dying art form of musical theater and then still had to audition for roles, most of which I wouldn't get? No, wait, that's too crazy. There's being reckless and then there's being blatantly self-defeating. <laughs> Creating writing is same is same vibes, vibes. Uh, philosophy is way too vague and too boring. Don't even get me started on game development. Oh, I know. I'll go to a school with, with independent studies and create a major. Professional poker player? That was that way there's always risk, but also opportunity for reward. Damien turns on his phone and submits several applications onli online, costing him upwards of $500 in total, because you also have to spend money to ask to spend money so you can have the chance to earn money to pay back the money you spend in order to earn money. <laughs> I guess that's true. Yeah. He then pulls out a deck of cards and starts practicing his poker. Unfortunately, 
Oh my god, what totally not badass, disgustingly chill activities are you doing now? What are you talking about? First of all, I'm reckless wasting hundreds of thousands of dollars on a useless education. And also, of all, poker is super irresponsible and super cool. You wear leather jackets and sunglasses and say all in and... It is so cute that you're playing with your little cards. Last time I saw a Ravi playing with a card, it was made out of metal and she threw it into a guy's throat. It's true, I was there! It also knocked over a candelabra in the corridor and then the wildfire appeared to a Ravi. I don't think the wildfire will ever appear to you for doing something as safe as poker. Safe? Safe? I already gambled my parents' lavaside beach house in the first circle of hell and lost it. Okay, well, now that's just too irresponsible. The wildfire won't appear to you for just being a jerk to your parents. Hey kids, <laughs> it's me, Turbo Eddie, the anti-gambling of the rock. Dahlia's right, gambling is irresponsible and totally lame -o. I need to leave now to go to my radical concert for cool kids and other financial, financially responsible people. But remember, the winning bet is a is to go all in on not gambling. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. What yeah, what that weird artwork said. I agree. Damien is indeed lame -o. Ah! This was totally badass and Thompson and I both know it was badass and we're going to lure that wildfire out and prove how badass I am. Just watch us. Right, Thompson? You're for more shenanigans together? Us? We shenanigans? It seems like Damien is starting to think of you two as a team. Sick, mm -hmm. two boldness and one fun is all yours, baby. Cool kids don't gamble. Nope. Everybody choose a food. Um, Mac and cheese. Oh, that's good. Um, uh, sp spaghetti bolognese. Okay. Which food you would choose to have in monstrous in monstrous quantities in a survival scenario? Start debating now. Okay, so we choose pretty much the same dish. Mine has yeah, cheese, the, and you are very have, similar. Mine has, has meat. A, yeah, meat. Well, well it's, I guess it's important to get your proteins in. I if, was just about you're... to say that. Um, but she, but mine is vegan, so it would suit. Mm. No, not vegan. It's vegetarian. It's not so, vegan. Yeah. So it would it's, suit more people. That's true, but but um, it's what you would choose to eat. So if you're not a uh, vegetarian, it doesn't matter. Well, dang it. <laughs> okay, final day. Okay, wonderful. Um, man, I don't know. I can't remember of any what any of these do. I'll go to the Thunderdome. The Thunderdome. That there, the camp dome, you do an all thumb wars. That means the campers are waiting war against the thumb warriors, the supernaturally buffed thumb monsters from Camp Thumb. It's surprisingly terrifying. You all were sure to lose, but thanks to your quick thinking, you had to plan to fight the thumb warriors with their greatest weakness, predators without opposable thumbs. <laughs> Some may say that your team's... Uh, sicking? Sizing a pack of rabbit mountain lions on the competitors is cheating, but you prefer the term strategic, you gain two charm. Hell yeah. Later, you meet up with Joyce. She said she wanted to spend the day just with the two of you. Your knees feel weak, but that might be the polio you recently contracted. <laughs> Thanks for meeting me here, Herbert. I wanted to apologize for all the drama with my exes lately. You've been so understanding and I've been doing some thinking. Before Joy can finish, a strange purple slime hole opens up right in front of you. There are palpable, palpable waves of angst and resentment radiating out of it. Uh, is it another X? Oh no. Oh shit! <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> I love him! Do you want to be him? I can. <clears throat> well, 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 if it isn't my ex-girlfriend Joy Johnson Jojima, also known as the witch who drowned my heart in the obsidian ink of emotional betrayal. Oh my god. 
we're on some Scott Pilgrim shit in this uh, storyline. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Hey, Jared. It's nice to see you too, I guess. What are you doing here? And, uh, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm not okay, I promise. In the dark of twilight, I was looking into the mirror and I did not like what I saw, so I began online shopping for the darkest shade of black eyeliner available. And I saw this post on my Insta feed. You're with Salmon now, Joy? Seriously? Yet another one of your ice cold treasons of passion, another stab to the heart. Holy shit, I am this close to deleting my Instagram. Not that that's any of your business, Jared, but no, I'm not with Salome. I didn't give her permission to post that. Whatever, you're just deceiving me again. It reminds me of when I was a young boy and my father took me into the city to see a lying whore named Joy. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> A young boy, my father. <laughs> <laughs> hey, even though this guy is clearly has an amazing fashion sense, you gotta step in. You tell Gerald that he needs to be respectful to Joy, or you'll give him polio. <laughs> You're defending this soulless wench. Hear my tale of woe, idiot. I consumed 1,891 living souls and became the most powerful necromancer in the universe just to impress Joy. How's that working out for you? <laughs> and she's responding by getting all mad at me for killing innocents and then cheating on me with some two-bit horny warlocksless. Joy is a cheater. Jared, listen to me. I get why you're mad. I said it before, and I'll say it again. I was wrong to cheat on you when we were dating, and I'm sorry. But we dated a long time ago. It's been years since we broke up, and the coven defeated you. I think it's unhealthy that you're still, that you're still completely fixated on this. And also, I would appreciate it if you could stop commenting cheating ho with a rotting black heart on everything <laughs> I post. Hmm, perhaps you're right. I haven't feasted on an innocent soul in many fourth nights. It's not like me. I'm losing interest in my hobbies. Since you were the grand architect of my pain, I expect you to you'll have some method to sew my shattered psyche back together. I guess it's the least I can do. Herbert and I will help you move on by uh by uh, any ideas, Herbert? Uh, get Jared a date. Getting laid won't heal his broken heart completely, but hey, it's a start. Uh, it's time to get even. Joy and Jared should play Monopoly together, and Jared should be allowed to cheat. Fair is fair. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Okay. Okay. Um, I feel like... You, like... Yeah, I feel like this this is not gonna help anything. No. This is uh, this is not what this guy needs right now. Nope. What he needs is to play Monopoly. <laughs> it's equality, yes. Oh, damn, damn it. it. Monopoly? I don't know, Herbert. Cheating in a board game isn't really equivalent to cheating in a relationship. I don't want to diminish Jared's feelings. Huh. <laughs> Nonsense. Monopoly is a genius idea. Nothing is more cold and heartbreaking than Monopoly. That's true. Capitalism's <laughs> favorite board game. You buy a copy of Monopoly Breakup Edition from Amazon the same day delivery, you'll start to play... Y'all start to play with the special house rule that Jared can cheat at as much as he want. On your first turn, you get hit with some super nasty student debts loan and go bankrupt. <laughs> Almost immediately, it's down to Joy and Jared. I rolled a six, but I shall use my necromantic magic to move my character, the little top hat, into jail, even though magic is technically against the rules. Wait, Jared, why would you put yourself in jail? I realize you're allowed to cheat, but that won't help you win. Did you read the rules? Quiet, foolish wench. You simply cannot comprehend the complexity of my evil machinations. From the comfort of my prison cell, I shall conduct a bank robbery. All of the cash in the bank is mine, and I shall burn this cash. Ha ha ha! Just like my hero, the Joker. Oh god. 
Okay, since you burned all of your cash, you've technically bankrupt. I still have the thousand uh, dollars I started with, so I think I win. Fuck. This is a betrayal the likes of which none has ever seen. Cheating on me wasn't enough for you, was it, Joy? You had to trick me and humiliate me using my favorite childhood board game. You've retroactively ruined my childhood. What are you talking about, Jared? I let you cheat the whole time. You just suck at Monopoly. I told you to read the rules. <laughs> I will have my revenge, Joy. Someday I will destroy you, and until then I'm going to make sure everyone on Twitter knows that you are a cheating, lying witch. God damn it. Ugh, that was deeply unhelpful, Herbert. Thanks for nothing. Plus, I hate Monopoly. It's capitalist propaganda, and it's not even fun capitalist propaganda. Why did you drag me through that? Whoa, you fucked up. You know what that means. Does, do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Uh, dollars. Pay the government three, three charm in your post bankery taxes. Damn. Dang. Oh, well. Okay, well, I'm going to go to the only place I haven't been yet, which is the mansion. Nice. As you're searching the haunted manor, you come across an enchanted doll that promised to grant all your wishes. Cool, you take it. It possesses you, of course. It turns out the spirit that was inside it, it is exactly like you in every way, so nobody noticed the difference. The only difference is that this spirit is a little bit bolder than you, so you basically gain two boldness. You are enjoying a generic off-screen activity when suddenly... Da 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 da! Thompson, you are literally exactly the monster I was hoping to see. I think I finally figured out how to lure out the wildfire. After all, third time's the charm. Plus, I don't think I've ever seen anyone's schemes or problems or situation last more than three interactions. You think back on your interaction at Camp Spooky and Spooky High and agree that yes, conversations on a topic tend to happen either completely randomly or at the most three times. We try to prove I'm metal, but we are... But we all already know I'm metal. We try to prove I'm reckless and dangerous. We all know I am. The problem is that those are qualities on the inside. They aren't objectively measurable. I need to do something that is categorically at its core all of those things. And ideally something that the old me that Avari and Dahlia think is dead would have done all the time. You can't lure the fire with fire, so that's out with means. Uh, my second most tried and true activity is on the table. Crimes. Here we go. Crime time, crime time, crime time, yeah! I'm f psyching myself up because it's fun, not because I've begun to doubt that I really am metal and reckless and cool since the wildfire still won't appear to me. Yeah, that was convincing. <laughs> what crime do you think I should do? Not because I don't know enough about crime or I'm not a crime expert and the best criminal ever just cause you've been a good hype person for me, so I want you to feel included. Yet again, another very convincing show of confidence from Damien, but if your spicy red cross needs a little extra push, you're happy to help him out. You suggest the perfect crime. A heist, it's time to steal someone's heart. The most popular crime among Gen C, piracy. Now we're <laughs> gonna steal a heart. Dang it. Oh, dang it. We both messed up. Oh, good point. Why didn't I think of that? It's like Mr. Rogers says, the best crime is whatever closest to you and requires the least amount of effort. Damien pulls out a knife and fucking stabs you. Oh okay. My God. <laughs> <laughs> he delicately cuts out your heart and holds the still pulsating organ in your hand. In his hand. Ah, it's weird. This, this somehow feels not as satisfying as it used to. I can't quite explain it. It's like the sheer jolt of adrenaline from stabbing someone has devolved to passing amusement instantly hollow. Agony sears through your system as you pathetic. A body begins to fail without a heart. You are in excruciating pain. Ah, what if Avavi and Dahlia were right? What if I really have changed? You are not sure, but what has changed is your body's ability to pump blood to keep it alive. <laughs> Was this even a crime? I mean, you're the one who told me to steal your heart. If I have your full, your full and knowing consent, then you were either A, doing me a favor, or B, maybe it's your kink, I don't know. <laughs> oh, I see. None of the above. It really wasn't really a favor since you were trying to get him to flirt with you and because of the excruciating torment you're feeling, it's for sure not your kink. 
Maybe it's this whole quest was misguided. Maybe I shouldn't have let Dahlia and Avari bait me like that. Maybe I have changed. Maybe that's okay. There's a time where I would delighted where I would have delighted to see all this blood pouring out of you and your heart. But I'm but now I'm just not really interested in the color contrast between your body and the blood, and I wonder if I should take up painting. You see a bright white light at the end of a tunnel <laughs> guiding you onward. This crime didn't help me at all. Your idea sucks ass. That's the last thing you hear before respawning at your last save point. You're alive, but who cares? You didn't help Damien, and now the thing, you and now he thinks your idea sucks ass. You make a joke about wanting Damien to suck your ass or vice versa, but you're too busy mourning your minus two fun and minus one smart. Damn. That didn't we, go as planned. We really did done goof up both of us. Yeah. Okay. Oh well, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask my goth girlfriend. Yeah. Yes. I am gonna do a little jiggy medink and actually ask Avari. Oh, bro, you just gotta get rejected so fast. Oh no, you're just gonna see. We're gonna take her to the summer shower. No, meteor shower, not summer shower. You gotta get rejected just right off the bat. No, 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 no. You finally gather the courage and ask your beloved to watch the meteor shower with you. You wanna be a summer fling, huh? Um, let me run some DV, 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 divinations first. You know, to be sure we have a future together. Watch, I'll stir these tea leaves and read the future from them. Let me see. Oh no, these leaves totally say tragedy awaits us if we did. I'm so sorry, it's not me, it's the tea leaves who have spoken. Damn tea leaves, right? <laughs> I... God damn it! You fail to see how you can come back from this, Herbert. It's doomed to be lame forever. Oh no! Why does this always happen? <laughs> it's just a family of rejections. Why can I never get a day? <laughs> 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 and yet things change, but now how you think, but not how you think. One day you piss off an old witch who curses you by body switching your mind with the alpacas. Not only are you trapped in the body of an alpaca forever, but what's worse, the alpaca proves to be better at being you than you were. God damn it. God damn it. Everyone seems to like the new Herb Herbert better, and you're just the alpaca who couldn't get a date. Oof. Oh, come on, come on, Avari. Finally got a meteor shower with you. Wait, you want to be my summer fling? Whoa. Like dating. Uh, okay. I mean, we could totally get into competitive dating. Yeah, you versus me. Get ready for an intense session of dating, Thompson. I'm gonna totally kick your ass. You hope so. Oh my god! What? Da 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 da! The That's... last day of camp was intense. <laughs> Before the How? meteors shower, you two plundered dungeons and fought giant creatures all day. Afterwards, you and Avari tended to each other's wounds in a romantic sexual way. You never thought being an adventurer could be so adorable. This game is bullshit. <laughs> And this game one... is absolute <laughs> bullshit! You spoke to her like two times! And apparently that was enough to woo the lady. This is fucking... this is... <laughs> and uh, sadly the Herber Herbert, Sherbert and Nerbert family once again got rejected. Oh my god, why does this happen every time? <laughs> Before we knew it, those weeks were gone. It felt like a hot minute and it felt like an entire lifetime. That night we saw summer coming to an end. We all wondered what could come next for us. It felt like the end of something big. Little did we know, life still had many wonders and misadventures in store for us. Now I'm older and I can see it, how those years became the foundation of the mythology of our lives. Broken hearts turned tragedy song for ten centuries. Wild nights became epics treasured forever. Every kiss and every laugh is now a constellation we'll always find while gazing into the starry night, no matter how many years go by. And with that comes the end of this episode. Well, 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 it seems like I got to go on a date and Herbert, not so much. This is fucking bullshit. This <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, well, what did you think of your little wheel of fortune here, Rita? It's the worst game. Zero out of ten. Zero I hate this game. Just because I can't get a date in real life, can't get a, ga a date in video games, this is, is not fun. <laughs> it's not fun for me. I'm quitting. I'm not doing YouTube anymore. <laughs> Well, I hope it was fun for you viewers, because for now, I uh, thank you so much for watching, and until that next time, uh, bye! bye.